Yes, sir. I'll try to keep it quick, but I just I need your help. Um, okay. Like, like I was saying, my my best friend was feeling sick. He lost a lot of weight. His his regular doctor diagnosed him with uh, being anemic, so they gave him an iron supplement. The iron stiffened him up. He didn't go to the bathroom for two days. He was having incredible pain. He went to the emergency room. They thought it was appendicitis, which it wasn't. Then they did an MRI, and it ended up being uh, a three-pound tumor. It mm. wasn't in his prostate. It was his large intestine. Uh, oh, gosh. So he had the emergency surgery. They removed the tumor. And now that he's been home for a couple of weeks, his the doctor at the specialty hospital is trying to push the chemo on him. And, I, you know, I just know from different stories that sometimes the chemo could be worse than the disease. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, here's so, the thing with ke- Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, like, you know, some people, when I try to give them information to try and help them, some people take it and it works, and then other people, they think I'm crazy and they think their doctor knows everything just well, because they, you know, they treat rich people. And I try to explain to him it's, it's a business. That's, that's uh, you know, everybody gets to make their own decision, and uh, one of the hardest things we have to do is watch our loved ones, or watch our loved ones suffer when we know we have some kind of answer or something that can help them. And, and parents have to do that with their children. Children have to do that with their parents, and unfortunately, friends have to do it with their friends as well. And we got a lot of everybody make their own decisions. Everybody gets the right to be sick. Everybody, everybody gets the right to, to to blindly follow the their medical uh, professionals' advice, despite the fact that we all know that doctors are a leading cause of death and disease in this country. Yes, I said that. Doctors are, uh, or medicine anyway. Modern medicine is a leading cause of death, or top three, depending on who you ask. A uh, top three causes of death, depending on who you ask. So you got to let people be, you know, and that is hard for us all to do. I've had to do it with my mom and my dad. My my parents don't listen to me a little bit more, but uh, they still don't listen to me. My dad insists he's allergic to vitamin C. I don't try to convince him that you can't be allergic to vitamin C. I just let him be, and he's got heart problems, and I know he could benefit from it. You know, he, he, uh, my mom, I, I've told this story many times. My mom had heartburn for years, and she wouldn't take listen to me until I finally just sent her some, some uh, probiotics. She started taking the probiotics, and it changed her life. So we got to let our kids and our parents and our friends make their own decisions, and that's not easy to do. Uh, sometimes if we know we have uh, we have a solution, we have something that, uh, that can r- help them with their pain or help heal them. And I know how you feel, and I'm sorry for that, but that's just how it is. got to let people make their own mistakes. Now, as far as cancer and chemotherapy goes, this is a very interesting point. Listen, guys, well, chemotherapy kills cancer cells, all right? That's what it does. The problem is, is the cancer cells are our cells. It's not like cancer is some alien invader from outer space that came into your body and now all of a sudden you have an a alien tumor in your body. Your prostate cancer, your, uh, your colon cancer, your lung cancer, your breast cancer are made up of your cells. They are you. They are rogue cells. They're misbehaving cells. They're selfish, greedy cells. But they're your cells. And if you do chemotherapy, you are killing yourselves, your cells, which in essence is killing yourself. And this is what the toxicity for chemotherapy is. Now, if you have an emergency and you've got to get rid of this thing, I understand. But other than that, chemotherapy should be the last of the last of the last resorts, along with uh, surgery, unless it's a, uh, an emergency. Now, obviously, there's times you need it. And I understand this, but it should be a last resort. If you want to address cancer effectively, you have to address the environment that the cancer lives in. This is so important to understand. Cancer only lives in a toxic environment. Cancer only lives in a malnourished environment. Cancer only lives in an anoxic environment. Anoxia means low oxygen. So we create an environment that's conducive to cancer, which means that if you want to prevent cancer or reverse cancer, you have to change the environment. You have to change the terrain. This is the, it's not just cancer, this is true about all diseases, but especially cancer because it's so freaky and such an important cause of death in this country, the second leading cause of death, and a million people get cancer every year. We have to change the environment of toxicity. We have to change the environment of of anoxia, lack of oxygen. We have to change the environment of starvation in the cell. And this is where nutrition comes in. This is where oxygen comes in. And this is where detoxification comes in. And in my opinion, this is how you deal with cancer. 
you provide the body, the entire body, with the nutrients it needs, and there's a lot of them. And there's a lot of them that are specifically important for the immune system. You know, you have something in your body called TNF, which stands for tumor, tumor necrosis factor. TNF, tumor necrosis factor, kills cancer. That's its job. It kills tumors. Tumor necrosis factor. Necrosis means killing. Death. Tumor death factor. How do you like that? You've got an immune system that produces tumor death factor. We all get cancer all the time, but tumor death factor kills it. So if you got cancer, you have a problem with your tumor death factor. you got a problem with your immune system. For some reason, your body's not operating as it should. So killing the cancer, yeah, uh, if you have an emergency, you got to do what you got to do. But the main role of, uh, of can- the main job of a good cancer therapy is to, prevent, is to uh, uh, prevent the cancer from being able to thrive. Not to kill it necessarily, but to keep it from being able to thrive, to keep cells from turning cancers in the first place. And once they're there, to prevent them from being able to proliferate. Your second, by the way, your second, uh, you have a second type of uh, cell called a natural killer cell, an NK cell. Your natural killer cells, like your tumor necrosis factor, kills cancer. We have a stupendously intelligent and evolved immune system that's designed to take care of cancer, and there's wonderful nutrients that support the immune system, and there's wonderful health strategies that build the immune system, just like there are crappy foods and crappy strategies that destroy our immune system. So if you have cancer, or even better, if you want to protect yourself from cancer, the most important thing you could do is provide the body with an environment that's not conducive to cancer. That means oxygen. You can actually go get uh, oxygen treatments in hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Or you can practice your deep breathing techniques, uh, making sure you're blowing off carbon dioxide as you're inhaling in oxygen. Get yourself an app, the uh, My Calm Beat app on your smartphone, or uh, what's the other one, Bio Breathing. Uh, the bio breathing app and follow along with them and do them every day. We should all do them. You want to make sure that you're using nutrients that support the immune system. Vitamin C is the king of immune system nutrients. And if I had cancer, God forbid, I would be using IV, intravenous vitamin C. I'd be finding somebody to be injecting it right in my veins. You can use IV glutathione. And glutathione is one of the body's primary cancer fighters. You can help the body build glutathione with OPC selenium from longevity, with glutamine powder. You can, uh, with sulfur, with MSM sulfur, the B complex can be helpful. Magnesium can be helpful. There's actually something called the Myers cocktail, which is magnesium in the B complex that sometimes doctors will give IV. Hang on, Gary. Got a couple more things I want to say. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back with more of your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side. We got a full board. I'm going to try to get to everybody today. If uh, if I don't get to you, or if you got some questions, I'm going to be doing the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program later today. So uh, check out, uh, look it up on the web and see where it's playing. Or you can get it off the website as well. Uh, just Google Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and you're welcome to call me. Uh, give me a shout on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program later this afternoon. Okay, uh, Gary, uh, New York. Uh, I hope yes, I wasn't sir. too long-winded there, buddy, about prostate cancer or, or uh, you said did you say you said colon cancer? I'm sorry. Colon about, cancer. Yeah. About and, colon you know, cancer. I, I had I had asked because I know doctors just experience with my family. They they know little to nothing about nutrition and how yes. it could help. No, just little to nothing about a lot, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah. little to nothing about and nutrition. With the with the chemo, the healthy cells basically become collateral damage, correct? Yes. Because what, ha- what so, chemo's doing is it's killing, your, it's killing cells that divide rapidly. And the theory is that cells, uh, uh, cells, uh, cancer cells are growing so rapidly, they're going to get the preferential death treatment by the, by the chemotherapy. But the problem is your digestive tract cells divide rapidly too. So digestive tract cells are incredibly susceptible to chemotherapy, which is why people get nauseous and have all this digestive distress when they're on chemotherapy. Skin cells divide very rapidly, which is why people have skin problems on their chemo- when they're using chemo therapy. Uh, immune cells divide very rapidly, which is why like, chemotherapy can suppress the immune system, which alone should tell you what a stupid theory this is to use chemotherapy. Now, again, if you have some kind of emergency, you may have to do what you have to do, but it's not a good choice. And you should do everything you can do before you have to do chemotherapy. You should do everything you can do to prevent cancer, ideally, but once cancer occurs, if it was me, I would be doing IV nutrition. I'd be pounding myself with nutrients. And I didn't get to say this, this is the last thing I want to say, and I'm sorry I'm going to have to let you go, Gary, because I've got a full board here. Cancer, because it grows very rapidly, steals 
nutrients. It gets all the nutrients before our cells do, which is why when people die from cancer, they don't really die from cancer. They die from malnutrition. The cancer cells get all the nutrients. Cancer is a fast-moving system. And so the best thing you can do for cancer is slow the body down, and you do that through low calories. Nutrition, you want to make sure you're getting your nutrients, but you want to keep your caloric intake down. Fasting is a wonderful strategy for folks who are dealing with cancer. Uh, Sugar is a, a cancer's best friend because sugar is very active stuff. So cancer feeds on sugar. Keeping your sugar down is an incredibly important strategy for, for preventing cancer as well as, pre, uh, as, well as uh, helping reverse it once it already happens. I'd be going on a, a zero tolerance for sugar diet, total ketogenic diet, if I had cancer. And then, it, as I said earlier, uh, uh, cancer hates oxygen. It loves sugar. It hates oxygen. So making sure that you're doing your deep breathing, even doing hyperbaric oxygen. And I would be doing, if it was me anyway, I would be doing IV glutathione, intravenous glutathione, intravenous Myers cocktail, which is a B vitamin and magnesium complex, and intravenous vitamin C, in addition to making sure I was getting all my basic nutrients, especially the OPC selenium from Longevity, which has got some wonderful anti-cancer properties. In fact, even the Beyond Tangy Tangerine in the Clemson study was shown to have wonderful anti-cancer chemotherapeutic like properties, killing cancer cells. So get on a good nutritional supplement program, caloric restriction, even going to the point of fasting, ketogenic diet, restricting uh, your intake of starches and carbohydrates and proteins. And if you want, IV nutrition can be a great idea, as can hyperbaric oxygen or even deep breathing techniques. All right, that's a lot is of there, good stuff on keto. Any, yeah? Is, I'm sorry, uh, just one more quick question. Is there yeah. any truth to... Uh, Three parts organic maple syrup with... No, come on. No, 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 Gary, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. In fact, maple syrup is very high in sugar. It's also got some good nutrients in there, of course, but the sugar is not going to help your cancer, that's for sure. All right, Gary? Thanks, Mr. Hughes. All right, good luck, man. That's terrible. I, I, I always feel bad when people have cancer because it's such a, it's a potential freak-out death sentence. All right, so the trick is to prevent the cancer from happening. That's what we talk about every single day. If you're, if you're one of the lucky ones, and by the way, a, a million people uh, are diagnosed with cancer every year, but that still means 310 or 320 million people don't get cancer. That's most of us because our bodies are stupendously effective at dealing with cancer. So our job should be to help the body take care of cancers as they form, and that's what the Mighty 90 is all about. That's what good nutrition is all about. That's what the bright side is all about, and that's what making sure you're staying away from the processed, corporate, evil, satanic swill that passes for food in our culture. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Let's go to Maryland in Texas. What is up, Maryland? Welcome to the Bright Side. 